Right then, um, today what I want to cover is getting an image from Photoshop to an Epson 3880 printer. As you can see, the image is a black and white image, and I want to explore using the advanced black and white driver. So the first port of call is to resize the image ready for the size of the paper that we're buttoning on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image and then image size. Now, we're presented with the image size dialog box, which we've got here. And we notice that we've got a width of 24 inches by 16 inches um, and a resolution of 300. Now, one of the biggest questions asked is, uh, do we print at 300? Many people do. Uh, do we print at 360 or 180? Well, take it from me, if we change the resolution in pixels per inch to 180 pixels per inch, you don't lose any quality in the print at all, even if you go to A1. Um, um, there's no image degradation whatsoever. So to do this, what I want to do is I uncheck resample image and I change the resolution to 180. Then I recheck resample image. Now I've got to make the width and the height now of the image itself fit the piece of paper that I'm going to print on, that I intend to print on. Now I know that it's an A3 plus Super A3, so I know that if I make the width of the image, this is landscape, bear it in mind, 17 inches, the height goes to 11 inches and therefore that will fit on my piece of paper. I click OK and the image reduces in size. To bring it back up to a slightly bigger size for view and I'll just go Command plus and plus. OK. Now we want to move towards the print dialog boxes. So I'm going to go up to the top menu bar and I'm going to go File and Print. Now this brings up the Photoshop Print Settings dialog box. And we can see that what we've got is only part of our image represented here. The rest of it, if we pull that down, we can see the full image there and this is cropping it off. Now the reason it's doing that is we need to first select the layout. We're on portrait at the minute, hence the reason it's cutting the edges off. We put it onto landscape. We can see that that's what it will look like on the piece of paper. Bear in mind, this preview is very, very important with any Epson printer dialog boxes. What you see there is essentially what will appear out of the printer. So if it looks odd there or there's something wrong, go back and check your image size or your paper size. Now, printer setup, we're going to have Epson Stylus Pro 3880 printer that has the advanced black and white driver installed on it. Okay, comes with the printer. Now, many people, when they print for black and white or print using these drivers, the common mistake is this. They select colour handling as Photoshop manages colours. And then they go down to the printer profile. Now, when we click on the arrows here, it brings up... I've got a vast array of different profiles from different papers I've used over the years. And say, for example, we're going to use the Epson Premium Luster Photo Paper for the 3880. We'd, we'd click on that, and then we can move forward. But that, if you do that, you are not using the Advanced Black and White Driver. To use the Advanced Black and White Driver, rather counterintuitively, what you've got to do is select Printer Manages Colours. Now we'll see now that the printer profile is greyed out. <clears throat> now the reason why this is happening is the advanced black and white driver using printer manager's colours cuts out two inks from the mix. And the two inks it cuts out, uh, they're not used during the print process, are the magenta ink cartridge and the cyan ink cartridge. Not light cyan, not light magenta but magenta and cyan and that prevents us getting them horrible kind of magenta -y red color casts or the bluey green color cast which was so common in, in in black and white digital printing quite a few years ago and the advanced black and white drivers got rid of that okay so when we've done that leave everything rendered intense as color metric position size this is all fine because as we can see from our our little thumbnail here, of representation here, we know that the image is going to fit on the piece of paper. Now we move forward, we click on print settings. This brings up the print dialog box here. 
and it shows that we've got our printer selected there. Make sure that's there because that will load the previous prints that you've used if you have more than one. We've still got the 3880. Our paper size is Super A3, which is what we mentioned before. Now we can want to click on Layout and we want to go into Print Settings. Now this basically opens up the dialog box. Now we've got the media type, premium luster photo paper, which is what we're going to be using. Once again, we can click on that and we've got a number of different paper types here that we can choose from. Okay. But we notice now that colour and, and, and this dialog box is greyed out. Colour settings is greyed out. <clears throat> what we want to be using is the advanced black and white driver. Now, should this happen to you, if you click on print settings again and go up to colour matching, click on that. This reduces the box but brings two main options here beneath colour matching. It's colour sync or Epsom colour controls. To gain access to the advanced black and white driver, you want to click on Epsom colour controls. When that's activated, go back to clicking on colour matching and return to print settings. Now what we'll see is colour and colour settings is not greyed out. We can access this. If we click on colour now, then we can get access to the advanced black and white photo, the advanced black and white driver. We click on that. Now we notice that when we do that, this colour color matching turns to colour neutral or colour tone neutral. If we go back to colour there, colour settings are switched off. When we go back to the advanced black and white, it changes to colour toning. Leave it as neutral for now. Don't do anything with it at all. Another thing worth mentioning at this moment in time is that there are only certain media types that will allow you to use the advanced black and white photo. So, if we click on media type and go to plain paper, oops, just go back to that, go to plain paper, here, when we try and access the advanced black and white photo, it doesn't allow us, okay, it's got to be one of the heavyweight papers, and we're using premium luster photo paper, okay, then we go back into our advanced black and white photo. Okay, now at the moment, leave your print quality at super fine, 1440 dpi, that's fine. Leave high speed on, that's also fine. Um, now if we go from basic into advanced colour settings now, this is the first time we will see the advanced black and white driver. So I'll click on that. Now you get this dialogue box here. Okay, there's lots of things to choose from. My recommendation is to don't touch any of them, okay? Providing you've got a well-profiled monitor, the luminosity of the monitor is not too high, all that you need to do is alter one thing, and that's tone. Now, the default, you've got colour toning is neutral, and the default is darker. My recommendation is just to start with dark. Now, when we select dark, you'll notice colour toning above changes to fine adjustment. The only reason why that's doing that is that it knows that anything below colour toning down here, something's been altered. And so we're, fi we're finally adjusting what we want the advanced black and white driver to do. When you select tone and dark there, leave brightness, contrast, shadow tonality, leave them all alone. Don't touch them at all. This colour wheel here is for is for split toning, it's colour toning later on. That's something else we can we can explore later on. But first and foremost, the most important thing is getting a neutral black and white print from the printer using the advanced black and white driver that matches what's on your monitor. When you've done that, click save. Okay. And then we're back to the Photoshop print settings here. Now, providing you've got your piece of media or your piece of A3 Plus premium luster photo paper in your printer, <clears throat> then you hit print and it will produce a print. Now, at such days, when the print comes out, the knack with the advanced black and white driver is to get the print and compare the print with your monitor. Now, should the print, say, be too dark, I want you to go back into print settings, go from layout to print settings again in the print dialog box and then change it from dark 
to normal. You'll notice the thumbnail of the girl here on this side will go slightly lighter when I select normal. There we go. Now all we're trying to do is alter it from this end. It's counterintuitive. It's like we're doing things backwards. But what we want to do is we're actually creating our own profile. We're not using the standard full colour profile and we're not using the magenta and the cyan ink cartridges. When you've done that, hit save. And then put another piece of paper, the same media type, in your printer and hit print. I song strongly suspect that it won't take many goes at doing this. And when you're finished, you will have a perfectly neutral black and white print that comes out of your Epsom 3880 printer or any other printer that has the advanced black and white driver that will match your screen and it will have no colour casts at all. Have a go and see how you get on.